Welcome to our seventh episode of A Bird's Eye View, a spotlight on faculty teaching excellence. Once again, we look forward to sharing remote learning best practices of our outstanding Broward College faculty. My name is Michelle Levine, and I'm the District Director of Faculty Development in CTEL. Hi, and I'm Belinda Meridian, uh, the District Director for Instructional Design. Joining us today as our faculty guest is Dr. Tuli Badillo, representing the Industry Management, Construction, and Transportation, aka IMCT Pathway. Dr. Tuli Badillo teaches supply chain management courses for our local, online, and international Broward College students. She has worked for two Fortune 500 companies and has earned a BS from Rutgers University, an MBA from Embry-Riddle University, and a DBA from Walden University. A fun fact about Dr. Badillo, Tuli went to high school with the reality TV cake boss, owner of Carlos Bakery in Hoboken. Welcome, Dr. Badillo, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, let's get started. Dr. Badillo, can you please describe some of the best practices that you've used to transition your courses to a remote environment? Yeah, absolutely. So um, let me first preface this by saying that uh, supply chain management include concepts of agility and importantly flexibility and we prepare for disruptions now we did not know that there was going to be a disruption but that's just the environment we live in we live prepared for anything to happen so i would have to say that in fact we were somewhat prepared uh, but we did not know that we were preparing for a pandemic and so how did we prepare um, we prepare by engaging uh, our amazing um, uh, CTEL. First, first of all, we, I, we prepare by taking courses in CTEL in pedagogy and andragogy. And I have to say that I have to give first credit to Dr. Dominic Charlotte, who gave us many, many lessons on andragogy and pedagogy, and Dr. Billy Jones for using communication tools that really engage the students. So the credit is not really ours, but CTEL, Dr. Uh, Charlotte, Dr. Billy Jones, and all the other uh, professors in our, in our program. Um, most importantly, we created through AQ and QEP, we recreated and we redid our shells. We redeveloped our uh, D2L shells. Uh, and we used our excellent instructional designers to use their talent on designing really incredible uh, D2L shells in conjunction and in cooperation with our SMEs, our subject matter experts. And we had done that uh, beginning about a year and a half, almost two years ago. So most and or all of our D2L shells were either ready for online or blended. So we had prepared that. But what really helped was really to use the concepts of AQ. Um, I, um, uh, I did take AQ, I was the second cohort. And some of the things that uh, we learned there, we implemented when we designed the D2L shells. And what did that do? What that did it was take concepts, design D12 shells assignments and assessments and discussions that would allow the students to use their experience or at least put themselves in a situation where they can research and answer. That gave the student a better opportunity to get a better grade because they use their own experience. But directly to your, to your question, we did two things also that was, I did two things that were important. So one of the things that we're missing was while we, we had uh, classes, our students were the ones that guided the new students uh, in the do's and don'ts and all of the resources that were available to uh, Broward College students. The ASC, the librarian, uh, we, on the first day, we would take the students to the ASC. We would bring the librarian in. And so all that we did in class, but it wasn't just myself. The students really took on a leading role in guiding the newer students. Well, we couldn't do that anymore. So then I, we had to, and I had to um, 
basically think of a different way to guide the new students on the important things that uh, and the resources that were available to all the students in in, uh, in uh, Broward College, like the ASC, the librarian, uh, the uh, 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 and all and and basically all of the resources available to them. And that was done through BC Collaborate. So two things were done. We use I use BC Collaborate the first day of class to go over the syllabus. We re I recorded it and basically used that. Uh, that uh, BC collaborate, record it, and send it to the student so that when, the, as they were going through the semester, they would have some sort of guidance without ha immediate guidance. They could, you know, go back to the section that they needed to review. We went through every single assignment, with every single discussion, what were the resources available to them, and how they needed to navigate D2L. That had to be done on BC Collaborate instead of in person with the students guiding that process. That was a major difference, a major change that we had to make. Excellent. So would you like us to show the video now of your recording that you do on the first day? Yeah, please, yes. Okay. The first thing that is really important for you to know is that there is no book. Right? The book is contained and the material to learn is contained in the D2L shell, right? Again, I am recording this. I will send you the link so you can see it as whenever um, and you can listen to it more intensely. All right, so the first thing is you need to look at is the syllabus. The syllabus is found in under uh, where it says start the course here. I clicked on it. Let me see if you see it. Yes, you do. Right, so it starts here. You need to go through every single one of this, right? And you need to click on every single one of them. Once you read it, you click on the arrow and you go to the next one. And it's going to take you to every single item in the digital shell so that you can understand what your role and responsibilities are. All right, so when you read it and you click on next, this is your orientation. That means that you have agreed to take the class, you have agreed to participate, and you have to complete a syllabus quiz before Sunday. Okay, so this is amazing, Tuli. You are um, really maximizing a lot of the resources that are available to you. I know that Belinda's probably smiling on the other end as well because um, you've mentioned how you've utilized our amazing instructional design team, which I think a lot of people do not understand that uh, they're, I believe, one of the, the biggest hidden uh, gems at the college that people don't even know they're um, there for them to help. Belinda, do you want to talk a little bit about the instructional design team and the resource that they have available for the, the faculty? Sure, sure. I mean, thank you um, for mentioning that, definitely. So um, for anyone listening that doesn't know, um, instructional design is a department within Broward College, and we have a, a team of instructional designers, mm -hmm. instructional technologists, and also multimedia um, where we are able to assist faculty in enhancing their courses. Um, in the past, it has been viewed um, with the limitation of only for faculty that wanted to change their courses from um, a face-to-face -face environment into a blended or fully online. Um, but it's more than that um, for, let's say you have students that are continuously unsuccessful in certain learning objectives, then we can help to um, walk you through creative approaches on how to improve it, either through multimedia or delivery of course or whatnot. So um, we are a team of people. Um, we are working on a website that we'll soon have up. So you would be able to um, contact us directly for any needs that you have for your courses. Excellent. And of course, Tuli, we love that you mentioned AQ. I also uh, took the AQ course and could go on and on and on about the benefits of taking AQ. And I love how you have implemented so many of the strategies. I see that in your syllabus, you have a syllabus quiz, which is a great uh, practice to make sure the students are, are gaining the um, 
necessary knowledge from the, the syllabus and um, that's something that we encourage all of our faculty to include in their D2L shells. So thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. I think um, one of the things that um, that is important, important to me, well, uh, most of us in supply chain management come from industry. And so we know little about andragogy and, and pedagogy. And I think that it's important, uh, it was important for us to use the resources that Broward College provides us. Uh, and definitely, you know, CTEL and, and, and the, uh, the developers uh, provide because uh, we, 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 we lack that knowledge. And so using the resources, uh, if they could make us uh, better instructors, uh, then, you know, that's something that we, uh, it's important for us to take advantage of. One thing that I did want to mention as you uh, uh, spoke and showed the video on on the uh, tutorial, um, this was for the international students, and so if you notice, my speech is a little bit slower, and that's because their English is still not, uh, you know, up to par. You know, we're teaching in in uh, for our international department, and so there the speech is slowed down so that they can understand things a little bit better. So, Tuli, can you please share with us some specific assignments? Um, and activities that you have in your D2L shell? Yeah, so um, this summer, I, so when you say use the resources, we talk about we use all of the resources. So this summer we attended a uh, conference uh, for B, uh, Broward College BCX. And a lot of the students are interested in being entrepreneurs. And so to us, it's important that all students have different opportunities and different venues to succeed. Not just, uh, not just the academic environment, but, but the business, the real business uh, uh, applicability. That's important to us. So we, we added two changes. Uh, I added two changes to uh, the supply chain management, introduction to the supply chain management class. And in the first one, uh, we look at the problem. So in business, students need to understand business problems. You cannot go into business or go work for somebody and try to look for solutions unless you know what the problem is. So we looked at the problem of reverse logistics. You know, all those things that you buy online and that they're returned, it's a huge problem. It costs, it's very costly. It costs companies a lot of money. So we separated the concepts of the problem and the solution. So in the discussion, and this is how we scaffold the, the classes. We scaf scaffolding is a very important part of how we develop our D2L shells. And so in the discussion, we first find out what is the problem. And it basically gives you first a video about what supply chain management reverse logistics is. That gives a student the first platform if you're not in that business, and most of our students understand it, then at least you have a video to hear a really good representation of what reverse logistics is. Then we tell the student that in order for them to understand what is uh, the problem, um, they need to understand what the problem is. Once they, in that discussion, they find the problem, and that problem must have a statistic. You have to show that a problem exists through a statistic that shows that the problem is real. Then after that, then we tell the student then to now find a solution, right? And so now you go, if you go down to the next, we tell the student what the scenario is. The scenario is that you're setting up a company to compete against Amazon. And so now the direction is now find a solution. And the solution, of course, is based on the concepts, but it gives a student the opportunity to be creative and trying to see how they can make their own business, create their own business. And of course, they have to cite because they have to learn to use resources so that when they create their own business, they use um, uh, the resources to actually make a, a real, a, a real uh, uh, company. And so we, we made these changes because Number one, our students are interested in being entrepreneurs, but number two, it gives them a guidance. And then it opens up the possibility to have their own creativity so that they're not, um, 
they're not constricted to an assignment that's just so specific that it wouldn't apply to every student. This has allowed for more students to get better grades, but not step outside of the student learning outcome, uh, actually be within the student out learning outcome, but give the student the flexibility to use all their world knowledge to apply the concept. And it's been very successful. Yeah, this is um, just an absolutely phenomenal example of authentic assessment and allowing the assignment to really be personal to the student. And a lot of us have been having, um, you know, questions about how do we maintain the integrity of, of the uh, assessments in our course. And so this really is a way to uh, ensure that the students are doing their own work and that it's meaningful for them. So thank you so much for sharing this. This is an excellent example. Sure. Yeah, and it gives them an opportunity to use a real business scenario. And everybody would be different because everybody has a different thinking uh, and a concept. So another thing that we've done in supply chain management is create a certification as part of our, of our program. A student takes a class, and not only are they getting a BC uh, degree, but they're also getting an industry certification. And in that platform, we have a lot of gaming uh, because a lot of our students are, are, um, uh, are kinetic and visual uh, more than auditory. And so, you know, that's where the understanding andragogy and pedagogy comes in. And so as part of the gaming, we, uh, we learn an activity. Right? We, we understand, we go through the process. We're learning about something, right? And so we look at objectives. And then after, in different parts of it, then we create a game to test the knowledge of the student as they go along. So I'm going to, let's say, I'm just going to cross over the answer is without thinking, here we are, all right? I am answering the questions, right? And then I'm going to check for the answers. And then it tells me which answers are right or wrong. And then if I um, want to start over again, I can uh, uh, go back and do the activity again. And I, we find that the students are, first of all, really uh, like it, uh, the gaming part of it, because it's interactive. But importantly, it gives them an opportunity to redo the, the, the game again and, uh, um, and until they learn uh, the, the concept. Excellent. So it's so obvious, Julie, the, that your um, D2L shell is very robust. And I love how you made the comment in the beginning about just generally being agile and being able to respond to change and that's something that you were already prepared to do going into this so i think it just speaks so much to how preparation can really um, save us in times like this so that it really was not that big of a change for you to go into the remote environment because you already had so much content there ready to go so kudos to you and to your department for preparing that and being ready for this. Definitely, it was a team uh, team effort. Uh, again, CTEL, all of the uh, different uh, departments, the librarian, uh, the uh, the developers. It, it, it is not a one person uh, show. It is an all BC different department cooperation, which is one of the things I love about Brow Broward College. Or just this uh, this uh, sense of. Uh, cooperation and, and wanting for the student to succeed and so it's just uh, it's it's in our blood absolutely yes we're all in this together so while transitioning to the remote learning environment um, has been challenging there have been many positive outcomes as well what unexpected benefits have you experienced as a result of our transition to remote learning you know we we have no choice but to adjust and the students were resilient. They just simply did it. Uh, the students just, let's say, let's get this done, let's move forward. And they had a move forward attitude. Uh, I was at the end of uh, one of the classes, which was the capstone. And they're used to coming to see me on a Saturday, even though it's an online class. You know, we have Saturday classes. They were used to just coming in and um, asking questions on, on, and guiding uh, the capstone. 
Uh, in this case, what we had to do was have Blackboard collaborate meetings uh, for the one-on-ones. Uh, what I miss the most, which is one of the things that uh, is, is, is the most uh, challenging uh, with an online, is the feeling of uh, community. We had uh, our, our uh, program was very much like a family. And the other challenge was having uh, every Saturday we had a guest speaker. We had a lunch guest speaker series. And that has been a challenge. And so now what we have to do is we have to think of different ways. So the benefit has been we have to get creative. That's it. We just have to get creative to go to, to bring uh, back the students back sort of normalcy. And I think that the students are helping me and we're, we're having conversations on how to bring that sense of community back into the online uh, platform. And that's, that's a challenge, but it's a wonderful challenge because uh, the only certain thing in life is change. And you just have to be open to, that's it, be flexible and just uh, adjust. And that, that's, that's the benefit that I think that uh, it's, it's made it real, it's like, you have no choice but to think about what you're going to do to adjust to the change. Absolutely. So Tuli, just one last question for you today. What advice would you give to your colleagues as they get used to delivering content in a remote learning and, uh, modality? Absolutely. So number one, do AQ. That's a must. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really was a one year intense program, but that, uh, you know, I first did classes with Dr. Char Charlotte, but AQ added that much more intensity. And it gave me the opportunity to, uh, in my own time, review uh, the different concepts. And it stays with you. It really just uh, stays with you. That's the first thing. Number two, use all the resources available at DC. We have so many resources. Use them. They're there for us. Um, take all the pedagogy courses that you can take at CTEL. Uh, embrace change. Uh, change is certain, right? Be flexible and open uh, and think of the student's interest. You know, it's, it's, it cannot be comfortable for me. It's got to be, the more uncomfortable it is the, for you, it gives you an opportunity to rethink how what it is that you're doing. And when you rethink what you're doing, you're thinking of the student's um, outcome in mind. And, and that uncomfortable sense it's, uh, it's a good thing. Um, once you start um, uh, Embrace Change, ask the students for real, honest feedback. Candor uh, may be uncomfortable, but it works, right? Because the students can tell you how to make things better. And we do. And then let the students know that you notice, for example, if you notice that the student is going down in the level of work because you know that work, let them know, ask him if there's anything, if everything is okay, do not, you know, very open question, is everything okay and how can I help, right? And that really opens up the conversation. Letting them know that you notice that there's something going on and asking them, how can I help? And those would be the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, my recommendations or the things that I do in, in my class. Thank you. Those are all uh, great pieces of advice, and we really appreciate that. Dr. Badillo, I just wanted to say thank you for agreeing to participate in our webinar series today. Yes, thanks so much, Tuli. We truly appreciate your taking the time to speak with us today to share your experiences. Um, it's obvious that you have genuine concern for your students. We appreciate all you do to maximize their success. Your use of authentic assessment and gaming along with the ways you have utilized all of the resources at the college are just beyond commendable. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for um, uh, using this platform to allow me to speak uh, and uh, you know I look forward to taking more courses. I, it really is it's uh, it's a wonderful the amount of uh, uh, opportunities that you can uh, that I can benefit from from CTEL. So I really, I really appreciate that opportunity. Thank you. This concludes our seventh episode of our webinar series, A Bird's Eye View. Please tune in as we highlight more of our outstanding BC colleagues this summer. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>